Well, hello. Today we're talking about the best and most concentrated colorants, the pros and cons of each. Plus, I'm going to show you how to make color powder. Color powder is color in powder form, and it's my favorite type of colorant for many reasons. It's convenient, easy to customize, produces exact shades, easy to measure and adjust. You see the color as you're mixing it in, and it does not cause premature reactions in bath bombs. You can purchase pre-made color powder like Lakes, which are highly pigmented color powders that are very bright. A little goes a long way, and they're ready to go. But you do have to use an emulsifier when using these. Personally, I prefer colorants to be water soluble. Here's an example of two bath bombs, one colored with dye, the other with lake. As you can see, the lake has outstanding coloring power, but it does have a major drawback, which is it's not water soluble. More on this at the end. Dyes are very concentrated. They must be bloomed first, which means dissolving the dye beforehand, then drying it on a base powder. The base powder can be cornstarch or baking soda. You can make all the colors with just these three. When using dyes and bath bombs, most sites say to bloom or dissolve the dye, then put it on baking soda and let it dry. There are several reasons why this method is not practical for me. First, this would take several hours to dry. I like everything ready to go when I'm making something, so blooming each dye, especially three or four of them at a time, then waiting hours for it to dry, it's just not for me. It'd also be difficult to achieve an exact shade when blooming the dye and to know how much to use in the first place. Also, there's no easy way to adjust the shade after putting it on the base, and you couldn't add more once the other dry ingredients were added. I have several more reasons, but you get the idea. So, I bloomed large quantities of dyes at once so that I could make several big batches of color powder. To bloom a lot of dye at once, add very hot water along with the dye in a cup. Stir it well and make sure the dye is completely dissolved and fully bloomed. If there's any dye that's not dissolving, take it out or add more water until it all dissolves. Always test it beforehand. Absorb a small amount of bloom dye on base powder before making a big batch. Here's an example of under bloom dye next to fully bloom dye. Check out how different the dye looks once it's bloomed. If you're unsure, check the label. It has a very good color indicator strip If the dye isn't fully bloomed when it's added to the base powder, it won't be half as pretty or bright, and it'll dry rock hard and cannot be processed into a fine powder, which means you won't be able to use it to color bath bombs. If this happens to you, your only choice is to re-bloom the dye as it is. Okay, so to make a color powder, you only need two things. A base powder, which can be cornstarch, baking soda, or pre-made color powder, which is made with cornstarch. And liquid colorant, like food coloring or bloom dye. Add your base and liquid colorant to a bowl and mix it thoroughly. You can add more colorant on top of powder that's already been colored, so if you made color powder from my last tutorial, great, you're ahead. 
Just use that color powder and make it more concentrated. You can add a little or a lot of colorant. The more colorant you add, the longer it takes to dry. Even at this mushy consistency, it will still dry into powder over time. Adding a small amount of dry color powder will allow it to dry much quicker though. You only need to make the three main colors. After, you can mix them to make the rest. I normally just leave my color powder in the bowl to dry, but you want to stir the powder as often as possible, at least once a day, and break up any big chunks. Spread the powder out on a pan for faster drying. Once it gets dry enough where it won't stick, get stuck in the blender, you can blend it to make it dry even quicker. You can bake it, but be very careful as the color powder can burn. Set the oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for 3 minutes. Then, take it out, mix it up well, and break up chunks. You can bake it another 3 minutes after this. More on this in the description. Now, test the powder. If it doesn't stick together when you squeeze it, it's ready to be processed. Or, you can add more liquid colorant and start the process over for more concentrated color powder. I do this at least three times. Once the powder is dry and colored to desired concentration, you can process it into a fine powder. Add a small amount to your blender and blend it for about two minutes on high. Then pour the powder into a bowl and allow it to cool. You may need to blend it once more. The powder should be light and fluffy and extremely fine. Once the powder is bone dry and cool to the touch, you can package it. I got these cute little jars a long time ago at the dollar store. Only make the colors that you will use often. I only have this many colors, because I have that many containers. All the colors seen here can be made with just the main three colors. Red 28 dye is gorgeous in water. It's hot pink, but once the dye has been layered and it's very concentrated, it looks a little more red. So I added two tablespoons of lake to make it more pink. I did this with a few of the colors. But I make sure that the total color powder will remain at least 80% water soluble. I made bath bombs to test and compare each color's appearance, concentration, and performance in the water. This is Red 28 dye with about 15% Red 27 lake. This is a little piece of Red 27 Lake. Let's see what happens when I add more. Whoa, that's a mess. This is Blue Lake. It's important to note that I use double the amount of polysorbate 80 than I normally use for these bath bombs. Now you know why I prefer water-soluble colorants and refuse to use just 100% lake. I used food colorant in my first tutorial, but I learned something very important since, which is that dyes and lakes are far superior and a much better choice for color powders. Food colorant is much more expensive for the amount it takes to match lakes and dyes concentration, not to mention the added effort and time that goes along with using it. Thanks for joining me today. Please read the description for helpful tips and the supply list at the bottom.